Hello, N4H and H here. Well, as usual, came down to the shack to uh, work some HF, uh, chase some soda stations, and turn on the rig. And I, well, the last time I was in the shack, I was on 10 meters, so uh, 10 meters came up. And, um, well, listen to that. My power line noise acting up. I don't have the QRM eliminator hooked up. And, uh, and let me tell you why. I only really hook it up when I have an extended um, period of this interference. I just don't like another thing up on the radio up there and uh, if I don't really need it. Um, and I don't hook it up unless the noise is the type that the radio's noise blanker can't handle. Now, it is kind of cool that you can use a QRM eliminator, and I've covered this in other videos, so I'm just only going to give it an honorable mention here, that if you're not dealing with noise, if you put up two horizontal uh, dipoles at same elevation but perpendicular to one another, uh, you can use one um, as your main antenna, for example, and then hook the other one up to the secondary antenna on the QRM, el uh, QRM eliminator. There's, you know antenna one, antenna two. And um, then what you do is uh, you'll, you know, you'll rotate those knobs to get the signals equal. And then you can use the phase knob to effectively rotate a receiver array. So what you've got is, think of it as an electric, electrical beam antenna. Because by putting those two antennas up perpendicular to one another, uh, by the way, people that don't watch all of the video, miss out on things because, uh, you know, here I am, I'm going to be talking to you about noise, but, uh, you know, this particular um, subject pops up because I'm talking about the QRM eliminator. So the QRM eliminator, if you're not having to deal with noise, can be used to create a steerable uh, receive array. And that's why it's important that the two dipoles that you erect are perpendicular to the one to one another. It's not as important that they're at the same elevation, but you know that can help just to keep the gain uh, equal. But again, you've got gain knobs on the QRM eliminator to help you with that. So essentially, you would adjust um, the gain knobs until the S meter shows the same reading for whoever you're listening to, um, and then you take the phase knob, which I should mention before you adjust the gain knobs, put the phase knob straight up, 12 o'clock. Then adjust your gain knobs to get the equal signal on both antennas. And then as you rotate the phase knob, you're rotating where your uh, antenna is going to, well, you're, you're essentially deciding which direction you're going to favor. So, and, that, and the reason for that is because you're going to have lobes where you have gain, and then you're going to have nulls. That's just par for the course with, uh, you know, dipole antennas especially. Let me remind you, if you're, if you're new, uh, a dipole antenna fed with coax cut for one band is going to have essentially a figure eight pattern off the broad side of the wire. So the ends of the wire are going to have the least gain. Um, they will represent what we call a null. But if you have two of those installed perpendicular to one another, so maybe one's favoring north-south, the other one's favoring east-west with those figure eight lobes, then what's happening is, is with the phase knob on the QRM eliminator, you are electrically changing where those lobes are and where those nulls are. It's, it's kind of a cool secondary use of that that doesn't get talked about much. I've actually uh, done it. I did it with the old MFJ version, which has failed me so many times, um, and those things cost over $200. And I repaired mine over and over. It just can't handle uh, high power. And, when I, and don't get me wrong, I wasn't putting high power through it, but it was in the presence of high power from, you know, the uh, type of antennas I use. So I just wanted to throw that out there to say, no, I'm not using the QRM eliminator. I'm going to see what the, the FTDX 5000's noise blanker can do with this. Um, and if it can't, then, you know, I'll go get the, the uh, QRM eliminator. I believe that this may soon go away. And the reason is humidity, okay? 
uh, you mostly get this when you've got dry uh, air. And look, at it's, it's floating up and down. You can see it on the scope. Okay, so I'm going to uh, pan over and show you where, remember, I love a radio with knobs and buttons, and this one's full of them. I don't have to go into a menu. There's noise blanker right there. So you can see there that it, it already knocked it down. Now, there are some static crashes because, well, we're having a rash of uh, lightning storms lately, but they're out in the distance. Now, I'm going to, by the way, that high pitch you're hearing, less noticeable here on 10 meters, but I'll tell you what that is. That's my infamous washing machine that is digitally controlled and has a, um, a AC variable speed motor, and it uh, it just tears up HF, but it's, it's mostly noticeable on the lower frequencies, but you can hear that high pitch as it starts up. All right, now, if you watched my video on wide mode noise blankers, you will recall that if I press the NB button again, it will go to wide mode. Now, I'm, I'm going to tap it. Watch here where my finger's pointing. See the W? Noise blanker in wide mode. Power line noise is more transient. Uh, I mean, it's, um, you know, it's, it's predictable pulses, but they're very narrow. Uh, so... Uh, really not so much transient. They happen regularly, although sometimes they can turn on and off according to uh, what, you know, what conditions are on the power pole. But uh, it's a narrow pulse and the regular noise blanker can usually handle it. Other types of noise um, that are a little bit wider in duration take the wider uh, noise blanker to handle them. So here I am in wide mode. And uh, I mean, it's helping out. Again, that high pitch, that's the washing machine turning on. All right, noise blankers turned off again. So look at that noise floor uh, or no, noise level from the, you see what I mean? How it's varying up and down. We're probably at that point in the day where it's just beginning to be able to arc over because that's what you're hearing are arcs. Usually it's loose hardware, um, dirty insulators, or uh, occasionally a blown, a, lightning, a blown lightning arrestor that causes us a noise. So we're right on, the reason it's going up and down and up and down is we're on that hairy edge of the, of the humidity being just right for it to start arcing. Again, here comes regular noise blanker. It does a pretty good job with it. And then wide mode. Wide mode's taking care of the leftovers, which I'm, I'm pleased to see. And, and it does appear that those, uh, d those additional noise, they may be coming from, maybe, easy for me to say, they may be coming from something else. But wide mode has pretty much knocked it completely out. Let's turn the noise blankers off again. You can see here the uh, indicator. And uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll just mention to you that when you get lower in frequency, say down on 75 and 80 uh, you know, meter range, uh, even 40 really, and especially 160, the power line noise, unless it's extreme, is usually covered up by uh, just atmospheric noise. So it, it may not be as noticeable there. That's the problem is... Boy, it's really acting up now. Look at that. Um, so it's more noticeable here on the higher frequencies because, well, you have a typically a lower atmospheric noise floor anyway. Regular noise blinker. Wide mode. And uh, I'm not going to go into the menu because I did it in a dedicated video all about wide mode. Um, but there's also some tweaks you can do in the menu to adjust how, uh, how many milliseconds wide you want the wide mode to look. Um, on, on many of the radios today, you've got three choices. 
like three milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, 30 milliseconds, something like that. And then you've got uh, three choices on how, uh, how deep or how, how hard the rejection should be. This one is on a scale of zero to 100, and you can zero right in on exactly the width you need and exactly how much uh, rejection, as it's called. Uh, in this radio, they call it uh, level. You can get more details out about, th about that in the video that I shot all about wide mode. But I just wanted you to see the effectiveness of the built-in noise uh, blanker here. I mean, look at that. That's what I would be hearing without it. Knocked it right out. And wide mode. Now, and also, just a reminder uh, regarding wide mode, remember you want to run the level and the timing, okay, as minimum, you know, at the minimal level. Uh, only run it enough that it's effective. Same thing with the regular noise blanker. Watch this. This is the knob. See, there's the noise back. Now I'm rotating that knob. And you only want to set that to the point where the noise goes away. The more you crank to the right, the more apt you are to introduce distortion into the receive audio. The wide mode uh, version of the noise blanker is uh, capable of really introducing some distortion. It can make it very, very, very nasty sounding. So that's why you want to use minimal levels of the uh, the timing and the rejection level on wide mode. So those of you who have FTDX10, which I, I just did a survey and it seems that most people watching my channel have an FTDX10, uh, in your menu, you're gonna have the options to go, to go in there and set the timing. And then you have the rejection level and uh, you can set that. So you wanna run those as low as possible. So if three milliseconds, Oh, I think it's one, three, and ten. I, 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 I th yes, one millisecond, three milliseconds, ten. I don't have that one memorized, but uh, I remember that I shot a video about it, and one millisecond was enough to take care of my power line noise. So I don't want to use three. And uh, and then on the uh, decibel level for how much rejection, run that as low as necessary, um, because uh, just think of this: what you're doing with a noise blanker, hence the word blanker, you're literally interrupting the signal chain. So the more you carve out of the signal chain, uh, well, more voice information is going to be missed and it'll begin to sound like distortion. Okay, so I uh, hope you found this video helpful and informative. Uh, of course, this is the Yaesu FTDX5000, but what I'm telling you applies to other uh, radios. Now, uh, not all noise blankers, we're all created equal. Uh, so some do a better job than the other, but but here's the thing you got to be mindful of. Uh, don't let somebody say, well, this radio has the noise, best noise blanker there is. That's not been my experience, and I've been working on radios since I was 14 years old, and I'm old now. Um, one noise blanker might knock out a particular type of noise that another one cannot, but yet the other noise blanker might knock out a particular type of noise that the first one cannot. So there is no uh, ultimate noise blanker out there that I have ever run into. So, uh, And as I always say, the idea of a noise blanker is to get you by until you can take care of the source of the noise. In this case, it's going to mean a phone call to the power company. All right, hey, thanks for watching. Thank you to the Patreon team who help uh, keep this channel coming to you. Uh, without their support, I really honestly could not justify the time involved in doing this. Um, so... Uh, hats off to the members of the Patreon team who help make this possible. All right, and if you'd like to become a member of the Patreon support team, um, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. There are three levels of participation. Uh, associate level means you just appreciate the content and you want to help me out a little bit so I can keep uh, bringing it. Executive and VIP level, they have perks. Uh, the uh, VIPs have a perk that even the executives don't have. But the executives and VIPs have perks, for example, downloading the setup documents, what I call the menu optimizations documents for, so far, four rigs that I have covered, FT891, 991, and 991A. 
uh, that's one document, and FTDX10 and FTDX5000 MP. And I go through the menus that I change, why I change them. And as a bonus, I also discuss the various knobs and buttons and how I work with those particular uh, features. Okay, again, thanks for watching. And if you would, please give the video a like, a thumbs up. That helps us out with YouTube. And uh, consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe, uh, don't forget, if you click that notification bell, you'll be notified when I upload a new video, usually one a week, sometimes two a week. Again, thanks for watching, and 73 from N4 H&H. &H.